Hi, my name is Ahmed Rezik. I am with Adam Chea from Vivid Labs. Hi, Adam. Hello. Uh, can you introduce yourself? What's your job title and your current role? Sure. So my name is Adam Chayer. I was co-founder uh, and VP Engineering at Viv Labs startup. We sold our company to Samsung a little over two years ago. So I'm now VP of R&D at Samsung as part of the Bixby team. Fantastic. Um, let's go back to the beginning. What sparked your interest in AI? Oh, beginning. Um, when I was starting college and undergraduate, I thought, what's the most, what should I pursue? What's my, my purpose in life? And the most interesting thing that I could imagine on the face of the planet was the human mind. And I was super fascinated about how we do all of the simple things that we do. So I went to a liberal arts school. I have a Bachelor of Arts in Computer Science. And I took computers, but I also did linguistics, philosophy, psychology, neuroscience just looking from every aspect the miracle that is our mind. And that set me on my journey. Fantastic. Um, what does a typical day look like in your world? Oh, typical day. So now... If there is such a thing. Sure, there's such a thing. Um, we were 28 people when we uh, were sold to Samsung. So the life of a startup is quite different. A day in a life is different at different phases. When we started out, we were six and I was coding most of the time or trying to raise money through pitch decks and, and all of that. Uh, as we grew, now I started to manage engineering teams, software engineers. Um, today, I'm in charge of engineering products, so both the tools and the core assistant platform. Uh, and I'm in charge of developer relations for the Bixby product, so I interact um, both with the engineering teams, we have stand-ups, we're doing product planning, tracking, engineering, so a lot of are we on track and pushing issues around to different people. Mm -hmm. um, I interact with developer relations team where we talk about how can we get this vision out to the world uh, and get developers outside of Samsung interested. And uh, I still try to do a bit of coding. I'm still responsible for several of the core components of our, of our uh, system. So. So um, what is this vision you're trying to get out to the world? So I've been doing this for a while. Um, 25, 26 years ago, in 1993, before I ever saw a web browser, I said, well, there are going to be computers around the world with content and services we want to access. So we're going to need some way to discover where those services are, and we need a way to interact with them. And the idea of using a multimedia web page never occurred to me. I thought we would have an assistant that we would delegate tasks and say, I want to know this or do this. The assistant would break it down into subtasks, route information, collect information from all the various places, aggregate it, interact with the user as needed, learn from those interactions, and help the user get the job done. So for me, the assistant has always been about uh, being a component interface for essentially the web. Every service, every bit of content in the world. And 25 years later, I'm still working hard to make this, <laughs> this vision happen. Fantastic. So um, what, uh, what project are you currently working on right now? And what problem are you trying to solve? So uh, that's the problem I'm trying to solve in a, okay. nut in a nutshell. Um, we uh, sold to Samsung and we came out as part of Bixby 2.0 so there was a Bixby before Viv technology, but we're now powering the next generation version of Bixby, which will come out on all of Samsung, well, many Samsung devices, and they sell more than half a billion new devices every year of all sorts. We're talking phones and TVs and watches and speakers and refrigerators and, and more and more. They sell everything. So our goal is to embed our technology in Samsung devices. And then on the other side, we don't want just an assistant that can do a few things. We want it to be as important as the web itself or as mobile. Really a, a global paradigm that will change how every connected user and every connected business 
lives their lives their life, you know, their day. Uh, so to do that, um, I spend a lot of my time getting developers to try out our new tools. We came out with them in November, and it's a really, I think, a radically different approach than anything out there before. And I can tell you a little bit why and how, but. The developer world has not seen anything like this, and if our thesis is right, that these are the, the tools and the platform, the technology they need to really make this ecosystem scale in a way it hasn't to date, then I think it's a pretty, pretty exciting opportunity. So this kind of leads on nicely to the questions then. So what, uh, what, do, you think, what, what do you think it will take uh, for AI systems to make that leap? To, to this global paradigm, right. and then what approach is Samsung adopting? Yeah, perfect. So we think, you know, first of all, assistants are great. I've been involved in this for a while. Um, there are billions of requests every day that flow to the assistants uh, from various uh, products, but assistants are not really important. They're useful, but not important as the web or mobile. If I said, I'm taking away your assistant, you'd be like, oh, that's inconvenient. But if I said, I'm taking away your smartphone or your browser, you're like, I can't live my life, right? So the question is, how do we get to that level of importance? So we've defined four criteria that we think needs to be met for it to really scale and that today's crop of assistants are not doing. So the first is, as a user, I want one assistant that can do many things. And people will say, well, isn't that speaker over there one assistant? Actually, it's not. It's 50,000 assistants because it comes with a built-in core. You say, assistant, you know, set a timer or send a message. But if you want to use a third-party assistant, today you have to say, assistant, ask app 7 to do command 5. Now, I can remember certain things, but I can't remember 50,000 different names and command sets. So the use of the third-party skills and, and actions, you know, is minimal. I can't remember the names. I want one assistant, not 50,000 assistants, uh, all developed by separate people who have very different experiences. I tell one one thing, it's not going to know it in another. I want one integrated assistant. The second is I want to access that assistant across every device. So I don't want to have to think, what does the TV assistant know? What's the car assistant? What did I tell the car assistant? What is that? I want one assistant, and the device is a context that says, oh yeah, I'm watching TV. If I say what's on tonight, it probably means what TV show is on tonight, but I'm talking to the same assistant no matter what device I'm accessing. Number three is I want a platform that scales to every developer in kind of a democratic way. So one assistant across every device to access every service. And today's tools, if you work at one of the major companies, you're not using the same tools that you give to third parties. There's a huge disparity, and you can definitely say third parties are second-class citizens in a way. The experience to interact with third-party services is different. The development tools are different. It's very simple. Uh, so it needs to be more democratized so that they can create as great services and as, with as great an experience as the kind of the main company or the developing company itself. And the last is personalized just for me. So today, if you use any of the other assistants out there, they're the same for every user, exactly the same. And really, if you think about it, what should be more personal than an assistant? Your mobile experience is very different than mine because you've chosen the apps that you want. And we might overlap on 10% or 15%. We both have mail, maybe, and messaging. But you know, your experience is defined by that set. And so why can't we have an assistant where you can say, you know, I'm not the same as a 12-year-old or a CEO or a salesperson. I'm, I'm unique and I have my brands that I care about, my needs, my goals. So I want to shape the assistant to be the assistant that I want, maybe even with the personality that I want or the interaction that I want. And, and that should be... Um, you know, almost like ringtones were a reflection of myself by the choices I've made when I interact with my assistant. So today, that's not possible um, until maybe now. So, what in your view will it take for Samsung to break kind of the duopoly that's going on right now with AI assistants? Yeah, so I think, you know, 
clearly there are leaders, and Samsung is not the leader in the assistant space yet, uh, but we have certain advantages. So number one, nobody sells more devices than Samsung. They have a billion devices uh, in people's homes today, right? And they sell more TVs per second. They're, they're number one in just about every category, in phones and TVs and refrigerators, uh, et cetera. And, and people use them. They're in their homes uh, already, in their lives already. Um, the second thing is we've spent, I've been working on this for decades at this point, thinking about how to solve this problem. And Viv Labs, we started seven years ago. We've been focused exclusively on how do you build the technology to crack these, these challenges that I laid out. How would you create an ecosystem, an assistant as an ecosystem that could scale? And it's, we have to prove it you know, to see if we can really achieve it, if our ideas will really work. But we think if we take these uh, technologies, give them to the world's developers, the most powerful assistant platform ever created, and let them distribute their content and services across all those devices to all those users, this becomes a new channel for them that you know, today they're not getting to when they're using a web browser and a smartphone. Because there are moments when a web browser and a smartphone aren't appropriate. If you're washing your dishes, you're driving your car, you're jogging with your smartwatch. So we, we think if we can get developer buy-in and they start creating amazing experiences that they will be able to with these tools, this will be a, a snowball uh, akin to the web or, or the mobile app stores. Um, so around uh, the rework conference day, a lot of young people, uh, university students, uh, what, can, what can we do to encourage the next generation to get into uh, AI roles? Yeah, thank you. So, um, so we've put out in November um, a set of tools that I think are unlike anything else. And it lowers the bar to what it takes to create truly advanced AI system or AI interfaces to your application, your content, your services. So you can get access to it at bixbydevelopers.com. You go there, you download a full IDE, um, and you can get started. All the documentation and videos show you how to build Bixby interfaces to your content. Now, one point I want to um, highlight, which is not available, I haven't seen it on any other tool set. I actually, I'm, I'm a founder, so I talk in big, crazy terms, but I think this could revolutionize not only assistant space, but how software is built. So let me tell you this. For decades, the relationship between a human and a machine was the human told the machine what to do. Here's the program, you execute it. Neural networks changed that a little bit. Now you said the human would say, here's the example. If I give you this input, I want that output. If I give you this input, I want that output. And the machine tried to figure out the logic to ma do that mapping. But the human couldn't understand the results. I mean, it's a bunch of numbers. So what we're putting forth in, at BixbyDevelopers.com is kind of a next style of programming where a human programmer and an AI work collaboratively together to handle every use case and every request. And so the way that's done is a developer says, well, these are the objects in the, you know, if I'm in restaurants, this is what a restaurant looks like. And I have these actions, I can find restaurants, I can reserve restaurants. But they do these micro components and then every user request that happens, it's actually an AI that will write a program using all the core microservices and content that you've created. It will string them together in a custom program for that user and start executing it. All the interaction when the system needs to, to ask a question, uh, when a user answers, it will learn automatically and not ask that question again if it's confident. All built in, it's the AI doing that code which makes it so much faster, easier to maintain. Um, it's more secure and robust, so you don't have third parties who you don't really know who could access and do different things. Um, so I think it's a really different style of programming. So if you're a young uh, developer wanting to kind of get in on the next wave of technology, I can't think of any better way than to go to BixbyDevelopers.com. <laughs>
Yeah. Um, last couple of things. Sure. What have you enjoyed most about uh, the summit today? Um, I've, I've enjoyed the technical talks. I've been in the assistant uh, stage. Yeah. And there's been, there was a really great talk on design, designing good dialogue and you know, showing a lot of the flaws of today's assistants, including Bixby. You know, we, we can solve some of them, not all of them. Here are some challenges. Uh, I also enjoyed, there were several technical talks, one from Facebook, um, one from Amazon, about structure in language understanding. And I think that's on the right path. So today, you can say, what's the weather in Boston to an assistant? You can say, where does my sister live? Oh, that's a contact request. She lives in Boston. But you can't say, what's the weather where my sister lives? And you're like, I thought this is AI. You know the answer to question one. You know the answer to question two. It's not that hard to stick them together, right? You would think as an end user. Um, and so I believe of, you know, the, the future has to be, you've got a set of services that you care about, and you can make requests across that set of services and, and combine them and have the, the boundaries of a website or an app, which don't let any information flow easily between these sites or, or apps. You know, that should disappear when you have an assistant. And I think uh, Viv is contributing some technology in that area. And, you know, on the natural language side, I see that theme of how do you start to understand more than just simple requests like weather in Boston. So I was excited about that. Fantastic. Uh, where can we keep up to date with your work? Um, best place is probably the same website, BixbyDevelopers.com. We put out uh, blogs and, and video interviews along with the documentation and tools that you can get. So that's probably the best way. Thank you. Fantastic. Yeah. Excellent. Thank you.